Here we're gonna look at a nice viewer suggested problem. So I'm really excited to get viewer suggested problems, but sometimes I don't see all of them and I actually pick them kind of at random. So I apologize if I haven't picked your viewer suggested problem, but keep suggesting them. Okay, so we wanna find all X, Y, and Z on the interval four to 40 satisfying two equations. So x plus y plus z equals 62, and x, y, z equals 2,880. And I think this condition up here, that x, y, and z are on the interval four to 40, is really just a hint. Because I think what we'll get in the end is actually all solutions regardless of the interval. Um, but maybe post in the comments if you guys think that's true or not. Okay, so maybe the first thing to do is to factor this as prime factors. So we'll look for maybe natural number solutions first. I think probably just by the way that this is constructed, we should expect there to be some natural number solutions. All right, so it's easy to check that this is equal to two to the six times three squared times five. Now we're gonna make some observations about what must be true regarding X, Y, and Z. So the first fact that I wanna notice is that X, Y, and Z must all be even. Well, let's see, what are the possibilities? The really, the only three possibilities are one is even, two are even, or all are even. So those are clearly the only possibilities that we have. Notice if one is even, then it's gonna gobble up all of these powers of two. Um, so let's maybe say it's x, so that means x equals two to the six times something else. But two to the six is equal to 64, so this is bigger than or equal to 64, but that's strictly bigger than both 62 and 40. So that leads us to a contradiction. So we can't have a single one of them even. Okay, but now let's say that two of them are even, but if two of them are even, then when we take x plus y plus z, this is gonna be an odd number because we've got even plus even plus odd, that's clearly odd, but notice we have an odd number is equal to 62, so that's a contradiction. So that leaves us with only one possibility, and that possibility is that all are even. And I guess I should say we're looking for the natural number solutions at the moment. We'll make some argument at the end that there are no other real solutions. Okay, so we've got all of them are even. Now the next thing that we wanna do is work mod four. So let's recall maybe that A is congruent to B mod N, if and only if A and B have the same remainder after dividing by N. So there are some other ways to write that down, but maybe that's the way that we're gonna think about it. And that's gonna bring us to our next fact, which is that 62 is congruent to two mod four. So if you divide 62 by four, you're gonna get like 15 remainder two. So that means it's congruent to two mod four. And so that brings us to like our next little claim is that exactly one of x, y, and z is congruent to two mod four. So now let's break this down into the possibilities like we did up here. So we have one is congruent to two mod four. So that's one possibility. The possibility that we want to show is true. And then we have two are congruent to two mod four. And I guess I should say when I'm saying one or two, it's one of x, y, z. So not to be confused with the actual number one. Notice if two of them are congruent to two mod four, that means the last one must be congruent to zero mod four. That's because two of them only have a single power of two. The last one is gonna have four powers of two, but that's like clearly congruent to zero mod four. But that tells us 
that x plus y plus z is congruent to zero mod four. Because for instance, maybe x and y are congruent to two mod four, those are gonna add up to four, which is zero mod four, and then z must be congruent to zero mod four. And then maybe all, this one down here, which is all r congruent to two mod four, but that is impossible because if all of them are congruent to two mod four, then we don't get enough twos in the product to build this two to the six. So in this case, we would have two to the six does not divide this product x, y, z. Two to the three would be the largest power of two that divides x times y times z. So we end up with exactly one of these is congruent to two mod four. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll start with those two facts. On the last board, we argued two facts. The first fact was that every one of these x, y, and z are all even. Then the next fact is that exactly one of x, y, or z is congruent to two mod four. And let's just go ahead and say that we'll pick x to be the one that is congruent to two mod four. That means we can write x as two times a, where a is odd. And I should point out here that these two equations are symmetric in x, y, and z. So whatever we whatever solution we get will be invariant under permutations of x, y, and z. So if we get a single solution, that's actually six solutions for all possible permutations. Okay, so if x is just a single multiple of two, that means that y and z have to take up all of the rest of the powers of two here, which is five more powers of two. So let's maybe notice that we'll have two to the fifth must divide the product of y times z, and y and z are bo both congruent to zero mod four, as we argued before. But being congruent to zero mod four, that tells us that two to the two divides both y and z. Okay, well now how can we split up these two powers of two? Well, we can split up maybe two cubed and two squared. So let's maybe do that and we'll make just a decision here to say the following. So we'll say that y is equal to four times b, where b is odd. And then we'll say that z is equal to eight times c, where c is odd. Okay, so we figured out maybe the largest power of two that divides into all of our variables. Now we can insert these new versions of x, y, and z into our original equations and see what we get. So now we'll have 2a plus 4b plus 8c equals 62. So we can divide both sides by two, and that's gonna give us a plus two b plus four c equals 31. And then we'll have, let's see, two to the fifth times a times b times c equals two to the fifth times three squared times five. Again, that is this equation with those new variables, but that tells us that a times b times c equals three squared times five, like that. Okay, now we can just start guessing and checking cases until we have it. So maybe let's look at our first guess. And I know that like some people aren't comfortable with guessing and checking cases, but this is like a real technique that real mathematicians use um, to do research level problems. So let's maybe make our first guess where a is equal to one. But we'll notice that that guess is not allowed because if a is equal to one, then we have x is equal to two, but that's outside of this interval. But let's maybe make this guess anyway, just to see if it works. So if a is equal to one, then this equation right here turns into two b plus four c equals 30, just by subtracting a or one from both sides but that tells us that b plus 2c equals 30. And then b and c must multiply to give us this number 60 right here. 
But then you can check that that's impossible. You can't have a product of B and C be 60, but then the sum of B plus 2C equal 30. And now here's our next guess, which is actually built into the problem. And that is this fact that we have this lower endpoint of four. And that tells us that perhaps one of these is equal to four. And one of these will be equal to four if we take B equal to one. So if we take B equal to one, that's gonna turn this equation into A plus two plus four C equals 31. But now notice that is the same thing as A plus four C equals 29, like that. And then we also have A times C equals 60. So let's get rid of this and we'll see how we can solve that system of equation. On the last board, we ended up at the following point. So we made this guess that B was equal to one. And then we had A plus four C equals 29 and A times C equals 45. And I had a slight typo on the last board, which I probably fixed in post, but I said some things incorrectly. Then next we had this relationship between A, B, and C and our original variables X, Y, and Z. So we've got X equals 2A, Y equals 4B, which is in this case just 4, and then Z equals 8C. Now we can guess and check and get values of A and C pretty quickly, but what I wanna do is maybe do it a little bit more algorithmically. And I'll start by squaring both sides of this equation. So if I square both sides of this equation, I'll get A squared plus eight um, AC plus 16 C squared equals 29 squared. Nice. Now I'll subtract 16AC from both sides. And I wanna do that because I wanna turn this from A plus four C quantity squared to A minus four C quantity squared. So we can do that by subtracting 16AC from here. Then we'll subtract 16AC from the right hand side as well, but we'll subtract it in this form as it's 45. So minus uh, 16 times 45. Let's see what that gives us. Now we have a squared minus eight AC plus 16 C squared equals. So I'll let you guys check the arithmetic on this, but this is 121. Now we can factor each side of the equation as a perfect square. We can see here that this factor is like a minus four C squared equals 11 squared. But then that tells us that a minus 4c must be equal to plus minus 11. Technically, we've got to check both of those cases, but you can easily check that the plus 11 does not yield a solution. So the one that we take is a minus 4c equals negative 11. But that gives us a system of linear equations in a and c, which I've underlined in red. So let's go ahead and solve this system. So we've got A plus 4C equals 29 and A minus 4C equals negative 11. We can add those equations and that gives us 2A equals 18, which tells us that A equals nine. So that's good news. And then next maybe we could plug nine up here and we'll see that that means that C equals five. So here we have A equals nine, B equals one, and then C equals five. But that tells us that X equals 18 because it's two A, Y equals four, and then Z equals eight times five, so Z is equal to 40. So that gives us one solution to the system of equations. But then by taking permutations, we'll get six total solutions that look like this at least. So we could take X equal 18, Y equals 40, and Z equals four, and then so on and so forth, all of the six permutations. But then I think there's like a famous theorem in algebraic geometry that says you should expect a maximum number of solutions for such a system of polynomial equations. And since we've got these six, then we know that we have all of them. So we're good. And that's a good place to stop.